just in time for our after lunch exercise. You know, I'm kind of surprised, actually. I, don't get me wrong, happy, but surprised. I don't exactly lead the most exciting life here. I've spent the last hour trying to convince Zombie Me to open an old magazine we found and just stay still with the page in view. Long enough for me to read something, anyway. I'd take an index page at this point. Of course, we had other really cool plans, though. Like trying to reach that same deflated red balloon that's been hanging from a telephone pole on Garside Avenue for, oh, I don't know, maybe the last mm, 12 years or so? It's obviously just as out of reach as it was yesterday and the day before. But maybe today, zombie me. Maybe today is your day. And you know what? Who am I to get in the way of your dreams? Don't you ever give up, you crazy firefly. Uh, Anyway... Where did we leave off? I think I was doing a quick round of zombies, facts, and fiction. Something about learning to control my zombie body. And clearly failing. Truth be told, you could probably learn everything you need to know about zombies in a few hours. We're not really the most complicated creatures. Maybe we should get into something a little more interesting instead. I can tell you're just dying for another history lesson. Okay, it was 2029. The world had long since descended into idiocracy at that point, but it was on time for a blind date with mediocrity when, boom, like a comet smashing into the world, the first zombie showed up and saved us from ourselves. It all started in Florida. Because, of course it did. I've taken to calling the first of us Florida man when I think back to those days, actually. (laughs) Uh, It's kind of an inside joke for the pre-apocalypse crowd. Which basically consists of you and me at this point, listener. We're in this together. Bad jokes and all. Anyway, the zombie mob that picked me up was in Ohio. Uh, not that I'm from Ohio. I was actually at a tabletop gaming convention in Columbus, mostly thanks to this girl I used to date introducing me to the wonderful world of Dungeons & Dragons. Honestly, that was probably the best thing I took out of that retrospectively toxic relationship, which had ended a year prior with her drunkenly throwing a shoe at me during a St. Patrick's Day pub tour. But I digress. Before I even knew it, we were rolling dice and eating... nice, nice people? I didn't really know we were headed to Rhymesville when I started that sentence, but I'm not proud of it. So we're just gonna keep on keeping on. I do remember that the first person I ate was dressed like a space marine. (sighs) Ever seen a guy try to run while he's hooked up to what is essentially cosplay-coated stilts? (laughs) It's hilarious and tragic. Let me tell you, Zombie Him had no idea how to navigate that awkward predicament. Before anyone really knew what was happening, the zombie horde spilled out from the convention center and right into the bride parade that was still strutting its sexy self down High Street. We descended upon the state of Ohio like a righteous, rainbow-swathed, undead nerd herd of doom, which was, granted, not nearly as awesome as I'm making it sound. In actuality, it was a really gross absolutely terrifying rampage that helped bring about the end of the world. But I like to apply a healthy, positive dose of zombie revisionist history to the whole event. Besides, we weren't nearly as bad as those stupid robots were. Oh, cheese and rice. This never works. Zombies are terrible at climbing, and mostly only do so by swarming over one another, which is kind of hard to do when you're the last one left. Zombie me doesn't get that, though, so she'll kind of scurry at the base of the pool for a while until something else catches her attention, which, I guess, actually gives us time to talk about the, ugh, robots. As a zombie, I really have no idea how the whole thing started. All I actually know is that they are super effective at what they do. From what I can tell, they seem to have turf. Like some kind of lame gang that only has one purpose aside from taking up space. If that purpose were to incinerate everyone that comes near them. The first time our horde stumbled into them was actually the last time. As grim as that sounds. I'm sure you're not going to exactly feel sorry for a swarm of flesh-eating monsters, but it was really kind of sad. We had just rampaged through town and picked up a bunch of new friends. Uh, Things were looking great. Until, well, just as we were leaving. 
We heard a really loud noise. It was sort of like something in between a car horn and a fire alarm. It's really kind of hard to explain what they sound like, but the important thing is we really liked it. And when we really like something, well, you remember, we try to eat it. So naturally, we wanted to eat the noise. And just like that, we were charging over one another at full speed towards the sound. At some point, I started hearing this repetitive popping noise. You know, that same sort of noise you hear coming out of those little electric coil traps they have for flies. By the time I got to the front of the pack, there was like this invisible line or something. And every time one of us crossed over it, they just got zapped like a fly. And then there it was. All of my friends were just gone. Except for me. I don't know why she stopped. Um, zombie me, that is. She just stood there while the others rushed past one after another right into the line of fire until she was the only one left. I remember I was just staring at that line of robots while they did the same thing back at me. Um, us? Sorry, I still get confused and I don't really know where I end and she begins. After a long time, she turned around and went back to town. We've been here ever since. Nobody really comes here and for some reason, zombie me doesn't leave. It's pretty much like purgatory. I don't really think that she's sad or even remembers what happened. Not really, but it is weird, I have to admit. I don't know. Maybe she's just waiting for something? Like new friends she doesn't know are never coming? Maybe she just can't get over what happened. Whatever it is, we haven't been able to move on. Wow, that all sounds pretty lonely, doesn't it? I mean, I guess it, um, it kind of is. I honestly try not to think about that or how I ever considered all of those zombies friends or family or whatever. Zombie psychology at work, I guess. Um, you know, I suddenly don't really feel up for talking right now. If that's okay, well, um, we'll talk again soon. Uh, as long as you promise to come back. I mean, please come back. For what it's worth, um, I really miss talking to people. Holy shit! All right, or Getting myself calm in three, two, one, go. Only reporting this because we're required to catalog irregular stops and scavenging expeditions under code 513 of the Great Road Book. That, and because I kind of want to brag right now. Why, you might ask. Well, because I just stumbled on a fucking gold mine. No, no, not, not an actual gold mine, mind you. Who gives a shit about that? No, better. It's a comic store! Oh, so, get this. There was some really ugly weather coming in over Sarnia, so I decided against risking it and chose to cut through the Windsor ruins instead. I'm going full sail, levered down to the metal, when I spot a sign in the window of this old brick building. Had to double take and I nearly missed it, but hanging right there in that window is a Batman symbol. Let me repeat. A goddamn Batman symbol! To explain for you fancy pants Golden Gate know-nothings, the Batman was a famous superhero back before the fall. He dressed up as... Okay, it's not important what he dressed up as, but he fought crime. He's like hiding in the shadows and, and, and jumping out of bad guys. See, if you were screwing around and being a big old D-bag, it was Batman who was coming for your ass. He'd even beat up on, like, actual clowns and their evil clown leader, which is great. As we all know that clowns are only a half step behind zombies and robots for being the worst thing that's ever existed on God's green earth. (sighs) Actually, can you imagine what a fucking clown apocalypse would have looked like? All red noses and big shooed assholes like shuffling up on you and your family. (laughs) Horrifying. Anyway, leaving that fresh hell of mental imagery behind and getting back to my find, a Batman symbol in the window can tell the girl a couple things. If it is a house, it's probably the home of a nerd, which is a big bonus in my book and worth checking out. And if it's in a commercial building like this one, it's probably somewhere that sells comics. So I park in the front of the ruin and carefully proceed on foot to find that it's completely wrecked. 
Yeah, big surprise, I know. A graveyard for comics, just trash everywhere. And I almost gave up on searching through the remains of geekdoms when I find this sealed case and... Oh, you're not going to believe this. It's full of classics, preserved titles I've only ever heard rumors of. They're all here. And obscure stuff, too. I'm so excited. I feel like uh, I don't even know. It's probably not healthy how jazzed I am about this. But, but consider for a moment that these stories were my actual life back in Golden Gate before becoming a scout. Or maybe it's fair to say that they were my escape before escaping. So... I want to admit, I've never been more thankful for the auto-rooting functionality on the spinner. <laughs> I was so dreading the trip back home. It's boring as hell. It takes longer than it should, thanks to having to get around all the robot kill zones. So the last thing you normally ever want to do is let this thing pilot itself. Since driving is one of the only things that'll keep you sane during this trip, well... Not anymore, baby. Time to dust this thing off, kick up my boots, and get educated on nearly 200-year-old pop culture. Yes! And, as is required, I guess we need to get to the official stuff for this report. Uh, winds are still a wreck. No sign of civilization anywhere I can see. Original reports read that it had been evacuated when zombies started pouring out of the Detroit Tunnel basically kept that way since. Can, can you imagine that, though? Must have been some sight. Smart Money's betting border security didn't wear their brown pants to work that day. Because I, I think that this was just before we started dropping robots on the horde problem? I can't be sure exactly. I get a little dusty on East Coast pre-fall history. Especially when everything reads like it's copied off the same generic devastation template. Either way, now that my problem hover coil's fixed, I should be able to avoid picking my way through the tunnel by just skipping over the Detroit River. So, uh, wish me luck. <laughs> Callie is signing off. That's pretty good. Welcome back, listener. It sounds to me like Hannah was happy to see you again. To tell you the truth... We're happy to see you as well. We doubly hope that you're enjoying the experience of post-apocalyptia as we patiently wait for our protagonists to find each other. Just maybe we should be careful what we wish for. I suppose only time will tell about that, though. An Apocalypse has been brought to you by Red Fathom Entertainment and stars Amanda Hufford as Hannah and Abigail Turner as Callie. This episode was written and sound designed by Damien Sidlow with sensitivity reading and editing by Mac Shepard. We'd love it if you'd stop by and show us some love with maybe a follow on socials. You can find us on Twitter at Hanapoctico and now on Instagram for the first time as Red Fathom Ent. If you like what you hear so far and would like to support the show, as well as other future productions like it, you can be one of the first to do so by visiting Red Fathom over on Patreon. Patreon is, of course, a service that allows you to pitch a few bucks to us monthly to help keep this show going. Every dollar goes to paying our talent and improving the show, helping us bring stories like this one out from post-apocalyptia and straight into your ear holes. Enough of that, though. Until next time, listener.